Hey Richard here. I know this is the wrong kind of light. I've just got this yellow light. That's all I have. So it's going to have to do. <clears throat> but I want to say this. <clears throat> I saw some Trump rally the other day or some thing on the thing where this Trump rally allowed a black guy and some of Black Lives Matter to speak. <clears throat> and they, they spoke and they, they did boo him and uh, they were safe and everything, but they did boo him. And I heard chants from the crowd about what about black on black crime and just the usual garbage from these people. OK, the dregs of them. And I thought to myself, what is the what is it with you people? I, 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 I tell you something. If you want to build a relationship with a person, a human being, you have to validate some of their life experiences. Does it mean people can exaggerate? Does it mean people can be wrong? All of these things are true. They can. All of those things can be true. But I remember when I first got divorced, I went out with this woman from my neighborhood. I lived in an de uh, economically depressed neighborhood. If I recall, her husband, I can't mention her name because she's still alive as far as I know. Her husband uh, was in prison for murder. She had three or four kids, three, four, I think. And she worked in a cafeteria. She, had no, she lived at one point in the um, a rough part, uh, projects. And then she moved into a house across from me. Uh, in, in the East Oakland, though, which people know what East Oakland is, it's re it was, I lived in really East Oakland, not, uh, not, um, not uh, a make, make believe East Oakland. And she used to work in a cafeteria. And I used to drop her off at work. And anyway, we had a relationship. But she, she was a very talented person. She, she could sing, and we used to sit on my porch, and I'd, I introduced Beatles songs to her, and we would sing Beatles songs. And she sang with another woman. I, in a club at one point, but she was a singer and she was a, a very um, talented artist, but she had no formal education and she could cook. And she was into a thing about opening her own soul food restaurant, this and the other. Anyway, she was a, she was a, she was a good part of my life. And I remember one time we uh, were driving up to Sacramento to go and visit some relatives. And she told me, uh, she, she, she was afraid. She didn't want to get off the freeway. She didn't want to go any of those towns once you get out the Bay Area. She feared, as a black woman, being in those towns. And if you don't, if you, if you don't know about that, if, you, if you're not connected to that in some way, it sounds a little strange. How can you? This is America. It's California. But she was scared of leaving the freeway and going into those little towns and places up there in the Delta and beyond. She's Sacramento and the Bay Area, fine. But she was genuinely afraid. And the other time I, I was thinking of, also with my, my present wife, she was talking to me one time when her husband, she's Chinese American, she went up to Clear Lake. And she went up there and she said we felt very uncomfortable. Clear Lake, not Clear Lake, it's Crater Lake. It's a circular lake, an old volcano. And she went up, this was years ago, about 30, it's got to be more than 30 years ago. And she was telling me when I first met her, um, well, you know, we, me and my husband, he was from Taiwan, we, we, felt, we felt very strange there. We felt very uncomfortable and we went, we, 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 it was not nice. And I had a Japanese-American friend say something similar to me about when he was fishing somewhere or somewhere and what have you. And <clears throat> if you don't understand, oh yeah, the, what, what made me do this? was and want to say this I walked with a friend the other a few weeks a couple of weeks ago and we went out on the Bay Bridge we got to Treasure Island or Yerba Buena Island in the halfway and you can't we couldn't get into uh, Treasure Island without going up and uh, we weren't supposed to be there they were doing construction I was going to go on the sidewalk within this construction site and this woman who's a gutsy woman she's a she's a black woman dark skinned as they say in, in our neck of the woods and she and she's a tough character and uh, she, she got, she got, uh, I don't, very cautious about going because it said you shouldn't be here, it's not pedestrians, blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, come on, you know, it's just we'll go look right. She said, yeah, they'll, they'll arrest my black ass, you know. And she often will kid me about that. She'll tease me a little bit, like she'll say, I'll say something and she'll say something. Oh, that was racist. And I go, what was racist about it? And she said, oh, I'm just effing with you, Rich. No worries. I'll just get sticking it into you. And, but you know what? This is real for these people. It's real for them. And, you know, when we were doing that at Treasure Island, I wanted to push it. I wanted to go over in there. And I, I, looked, at her, I looked down at her and she was hesitant. And this is a person who's not afraid of much. And she said, if the cops come here, I'll end up in jail. And you know what? This is real. And if you don't accept that that's real from these people, 
then people that are in that situation, then then it's shame on you. What does it mean? It means you th you, you say that it means that you think they're liars. They're fabricating this. Now, can people be wrong? My own daughter-in-law, who's an African-American, black woman, you know, and she's dark-skinned as well. She once said to me, I was going to this coffee shop that I used to go to, and she came with me and she said, oh, that woman's, you know, I think she's a racist or something. She doesn't. I said, well, you know what, Keisha? I said, she's an asshole. I said, she's like that to me and like that to most people. Now, could the woman of the race, the color question have made a difference? It could have made a difference. But the main thing is that she was just bad. But... Sometimes these people are wrong about it. Or people that are in these situations, they're wrong, but overwhelmingly they're not. And if they're, uh, they can be right, anybody can make mistakes, but they're not wrong to be concerned. And when, I, when, white, when white folks do not validate this, do not have sympathy with it, think that they're lying and exaggerating and all of that, you know what? You, you must not talk to them. If you talk to these people, we, I've worked with black people, and I have no other guy, white guys that work with black people. And I know because of the institutionalized racism in this country, it's not easy, especially in a blue collar workplace or a workplace, not like a university. Uh, uh, they don't mind ideas being discussed in university. They're capitalist think tanks. There's not going to be, they're not afraid of students in the same way. I don't mean to put down the students, but they're not afraid of them in the same way. And, and so uh, 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 I say to myself, I think to myself, I did get a break. I mean, not. Uh, white American, uh, a lot of the older black guys would talk to me, would share things with me, because they didn't see, and even in my old neighborhood, didn't see me in the same role. I was I have the same historical role. But you know what? If you don't talk to somebody, and how can, how can you not, how can somebody who's gone to one of them rallies and, and, and say that, and ah, they're always complaining, ah, this blah, 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 blah. And like in this town, they used to call it Clan Leandro. It's called San Leandro, but they used to call it Clan Leandro, all the old black guys. But it wasn't so much that white people interaction with them, although it was, a, it was the most racist town in America in the 50s. I think it was on 60 Minutes. It was the state, the police, the institutions of capitalism, the education system, the housing. This is what weighs down on them. And so, but when somebody says, and of course there are, uh, these fears of, of, of being, look, the cops kill black people uh, and, and there are still whites that just cannot accept that that's an issue, you know, and it's just criminal. But the main thing to me is if you talk to each other, if you work with people, I've worked with, we've worked with people at night, you know, 24 hours and 36 hours where you depend, depend on each other. We've even been robbed in the ghetto together. By, by in bad neighborhoods, blacks and whites working in the streets, and and if that if 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 um, when you think about that, if you talk to that person, if you ask that person, hey, or and get into a dialogue with them, or have a drink with them after, and uh, and then you'll discuss it, and it's real, it's real. In my years in the trade union, and the, and the workplace, overwhelmingly. What black folks, any people of color, what women, including white women, uh, uh, wanted, because it was a blue collar workforce, mainly dominated, dominated by men, if all they wanted was to be treated equally, you know? Now, are there any black people that take advantage of that? Of course, there's rotten people everywhere. And any women, of course, there's rotten people everywhere. There's only one I can think of at work and he's still there, who played that, he was a lazy, lazy, no good, lazy, no good character. Um, but, but, but overwhelmingly, people just wanted a fair shot at the game, that's all. So when I see these people talking about not f understanding why a black person might be somewhat cautious in a situation where you might be doing something as a white person, I'll tell you with an English accent, Jesus, that's a double whammy. I've only got to open my mouth, I've had the police let me go, uh, I've been drunk before driving, they let me go, uh, uh, you know, oh, obviously, yes, I'm awfully sorry, you know, so please... You know, uh, if you've got Trump-type friends or friends that don't take that position, ask them, you ever work with a black person? You ever talk to them? You ever relied on them on the job? What, do you think they're lying? They're not lying. It's real. And, uh, and it's hard to understand that. It's hard to, fit, it's hard to accept that somebody can be that dumb. They can't, they don't know about history. But you know what people do? Americans are chronic on geography. I talk to a lot of Americans about this country or that country, and I say, they say, you know where it is? Well, it's over there. Yeah, you weren't taught world geography here. Anyway, I felt the need to do this, so I've done it. That's my thought for today, or one of them. I'll see you later. Richard Meller, check out our blog that I'm connected to and others are connected to. Facts for Working People, if you Google that, you'll find it. The URL 
is weknowwhatsup.blogspot.com, no apostrophe.